Hey, good Wednesday morning, everyone. And thanks for checking out your latest forecast video here from Bam Weather. Michael Clark, do me a favor, share the video if it uh, brings any value to you. You enjoyed the content today. We're going to talk about kind of the continuation and the trends here of a wetter forecast uh, over the next couple of days, uh, really the next several days. And do we see a change coming in the June pattern? Well, that's what we're going to discuss and see, you know, kind of where things are headed. So let's get right into it here. We'll take a look at radar this morning. It is Wednesday, May 28th. It's 9 a.m. Eastern time right now. This is a look here at radar across the majority of the country. Um, it's busy. It's, it's busy in a lot of places. We've got rain ongoing across portions of Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, the Mid-Atlantic. Um, heavy thunderstorms going on in the uh, Nebraska, South Dakota state line really heavy thunderstorms down here in Texas. Check out Southeast Texas just getting pummeled right now with very heavy rain and thunderstorms this morning. Some flood warnings going on down there as well. So it's busy. It's busy right now across the majority of the country. Uh, we take a look here just over the next 24 hours. We'll look at the rainfall forecast in the 24-hour period. And again, focal points for the heaviest rain are going to come across portions of central Kansas, where over the next 24 hours you could see upwards of two inches of rain. I'm going to change this to the light mode real quick. There we go. And uh, you can see here uh, you know, locally, again, central Kansas seeing over two inches of rain being possible. Western Nebraska, inch uh, maybe locally a, a little bit higher in, in portions of western Nebraska here with this thunderstorm cluster as it dives south. Further down to the south, again, uh, let's turn off the lightning because there's a lot of it. Uh, heavy rain ongoing here across southern Texas and Louisiana, southwestern Mississippi as well. Florida needs the rain too, so we won't, uh, won't sleep on that. And then heavy rains here across the eastern uh, mid-Atlantic states here. Future forecasts, next three days rainfall. Um, again, majority of the activity, a lot of this is focused in Kansas. It It is somewhat uneventful here in the Midwest until this weekend, perhaps. Some of the high resolution data into the Ohio Valley uh, is trying to suggest rain chances here into Friday. Um, again, we'll have to watch that. I'll show you a different solution here in just a moment as we get further into the video, but some of the high res data wants to put more of a rain chance into here uh, over the weekend, but the confidence is low and we need to kind of continue to watch that. So. Uh, updated soil moisture percentile maps here, again, showing where the rainfall is needed. It is raining currently right now, especially here. Look at this across north central Illinois, a spot where we really needed rain. Uh, this morning, the rain's coming down at a good clip. You can see that here right now on the current radar. Uh, so those folks getting some much needed moisture here uh, this morning. So We'll take that. We'll take that. All right. So let's take a look here. I wanted to show you, we send out what we call our morning ag weather report. Our team puts this together, loads up a bunch of information from overnight model runs, trends, changes, and all the things in the weather data. And then we email these out to our customers. If anybody's interested in that, you can go to bamwx.com and uh, subscribe or, or inquire for more information. But this is the intro slide. And what we see here is essentially uh, our storm dates, all right? And what we're looking at here for really over the next, uh, you know, 15 to 20 days. And you can see it's active, all right? We try to target fronts and storm systems uh, within these periods. And uh, even even a, a bigger storm signal here showing up mid-June, something to keep in mind. The week one and week two temperature departures, it's cold, especially in the east, the warmth returns though week two. There could be some some significantly warmer temperatures, especially in the uh, mid, uh, mid uh, Ohio Valley and Great Lakes area in northeast. Could be very very warm. The pattern will also become a little more active too. We bring that ridge uh, over further into the Great Lakes in the northeast, and we run a trough into it, and we have that gradient there. Okay, the outcome is going to be a more active pattern, as you can see here. All right. And then there's your, your, your seven day rainfall, at least for week one. And that it, it does kind of hint at some of the heavier rains here in the Ohio Valley, which again, I'll talk about in just a second. Okay. We even talk about the trend, uh, model trend analysis. If we agree or disagree with what the data did, we won't get too much into that, but there's, there's a lot of good stuff in here to make decisions on. If you're, if you're trading or your marketing plan for your farm or whatever the case may be, here's the soil moisture 
Again, the same map I just showed uh, over on Clarity, along with the drought monitor, you can see that Nebraska really needs the rain. Western Nebraska, that rain that's going to be coming, um, and, and central Kansas, it will be much, uh, much welcomed and much needed here as it uh, moves in. Precipitation trends here again. Here's the European model, seven-day rainfall here, and again the GFS. You see the GFS much wetter. It has that weekend system. It has that disturbance coming through late week into early weekend and brings heavy rain into the picture where the European model doesn't do this. Um, but I'm going to tell you right now, the European model is already missing. Just looking at this, it's missing what's going on in Illinois completely, especially across northern Illinois. Uh, so, yeah, something to keep in mind uh, as we go forward. There's, there's varying outcomes, but um, the, the GFS at least is not missing the current rain on the radar right now. Okay. We're going to look at precip data the next 15 days. All right, in the one to five day period, everything's pretty much in agreement. It's the six to 10 and the 11 to 15 we'll look at. European on the left, all right, you can see how we get very active in the central plains, especially the desert southwest here, as we, we, we spin up um, a precip around the ridge and it flows up into the central plains. Uh, all data pretty much in agreement. The six to 10 day is, is a little cooler and drier in the Ohio Valley and east. And the 11 to 15 day is where the pattern starts to come back a little bit more active. All right. Um, pretty much everything really is hinting at to at or above normal rainfall. The GFS being the most aggressive, including the Canadian prairies, where the, uh, the uh, Canadian and the European are not you know, really that into that. But, uh, you know, it's at or above normal rains in the 11 to 15. And depending on which model you go with, some people could be excessively wetter than normal. The GFS, the American data, is certainly, on, you know, suggesting that. Um, and you can see it in the changes. You can see the week two change versus the run 12 hours ago, how the EPS got drier and the GEFS got wetter for the week two forecast. So, you know. Um, which one do you pick? Well, you analyze the pattern, and I've got a little bit of a pattern analysis I'm going to show you as to why I'm favoring the wetter solution, which is the GEFS for the time being. All right. Temperature departures 1 to 5, 6 to 10, and the 11 to 15. Again, this all gets emailed out to our clients every day. It's pretty cool. Um, just a great snapshot to get all that, the latest information uh, there for you. But nonetheless, a strong agreement in the five-day period. Okay, even even somewhat strong agreement in the 6 to 10. The 11 to 15 is where we differentiate quite a bit. Quite a bit. Uh, it, it's, it, you know, I think the European data is better with temperatures than the American um, in terms of where the coolness is and, um, you know, where we're, we're, where we're placing, um, I guess, the core of the coolest air. But the American model is interesting because um, it, it may be struggling to see some of the tropical convection, what we call the MJO, but what's interesting is its precip forecast makes more sense to me when looking at the MJO. These models get really, really silly. You know, you've really got to, you've got to do your best as a forecaster to pick what you think is the best solution. And sometimes it may not make sense. There may not be a rhyme or a reason, but as a meteorologist or as a forecaster, we have to make a call. Okay, so if I pick and choose, that's what I'm going to do. Another forecaster may not agree. I don't really care. The point is, is that, you know, we're picking what we think is, is the best possible outcome. And again, I'll explain that here in just a second. But you can see, look at the differences. American, European. I mean, in the 6 to 10, these things, these are polar opposites. So we've got to watch that in the coming days. It, again, it's all MJO related. I told you I would analyze this for you. And here's what's happening. All right. Uh, it's it's the MJO going into six, seven, and possibly eight. And as this happens, it impacts the jet stream. You know, the, 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 the global you know pattern is impacted by tropical forcing and these different phases of the MJO, which is the Madden-Julian oscillation. And this is basically where convection is or thunderstorm activity is in certain parts of the world, of the equatorial Pacific Ocean. It starts in the maritime continent. Um, well, Technically, it starts in the Western uh, Hemisphere in Africa, and it moves over into the Indian Ocean, and then into the Maritime Continent, and then into the Western Pacific, and back again. So it migrates from west to east, across the 
the, the, the equator, really, in, in the southern uh, portions of the Indian and, and Pacific Ocean. All right, so this kind of helps us understand what that's going to do. There are certain phases that alter the pattern in different ways. Phases 6, 7, and 8, well, they alter the pattern here. All right, you can see phase 6, very wet in the central U.S., all right, and it's very warm, okay? Phase 7, uh, it's at normal or slightly above for most folks for precip. Maybe there's a little bit of a below normal, you know, whatever. It, to me, there's no glaring signal here. Um, it's cooler, which is why I think the European has some merit. Phase 8, the warmth comes back, but it's still active. It's still active. Maybe, maybe it's a little below normal here in portions of the Ohio Valley. Nonetheless, this, this look is an active look. And so we're just in a period over the next 15 days where we're going to continue to see storm systems on and off rain chances. And uh, that's, that's changing the June forecast. All right. This is the latest CFS projection uh, for the June outcome for precipitation. And you can see, look at the 25th of May up here. And now look at the 28th. I mean, we're trending wetter and wetter. I mean, this is a, this is, you know, this is a, a, a different look, a different trend. And the tropical forcing may have something to do with that. Not to mention, there's a potential that as we work into uh, June, that we're dealing with the potential for tropical risks. And that's going to be, again, due to the tropical forcing or this Madden-Julian oscillation that may be supportive for this. So a tropical risk increase, a higher, a higher than normal threat. And what I could see happening in this particular situation is something does form in the Gulf. And uh, if there's ridging up here, if there's a ridge here, something could get stuck in here. And that's why this is an excessively heavy forecast for rain in June right now. And it wouldn't shock me if something gets caught up in the flow and there's a lot of rain in the central and southern U.S. in the month of June at least the first two weeks of it, at least the first two weeks. That, that's the idea right now. All right, so uh, we'll go back here real quick and, and go to uh, the June temperature forecast. Again, you can see what I'm talking about. All right, you can see the cool departures where uh, the uh, storm system, a uh, tropical low could get caught up down here in the south central U.S. Very similar to a few years ago when we had a situation where we, that we called the tropical storm bud. Uh, that was a mess down there in the South Central Plains. I'll show you real quick. We have our updated June forecast on Clarity, and we'll wrap this up. Again, be sure to, to share this with a friend. Um, but here's our, here's our June forecast right now. Again, we, we, the month certainly is going to start active with its fair share of cold fronts and shots of cooler air. Okay, um, And then there's a potential mid to late June that the pattern does get warmer and turn drier. That's still... A, a potential outcome to the summer forecast question is just going to right now be when is that going to happen but still overall we probably boat above normal for temperatures in the central u.s and in the southwestern u.s the june precip outlook again it, it it's going to be in, extraordinarily wet and i think if if tropical activity comes in and something gets stuck down here the much above normal forecast is, is spot on i think it can start wet but if there's a spot where it can turn drier than normal, doesn't mean it won't rain. It would be in this general vicinity uh, right now as the data is back and forth on those suggestions. So that's our latest forecast right now. If you've got questions, be sure to reach out to us. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Real quick, if, if you're still watching, I, I will show you again uh, over here on Synoptic, which is our, our uh, forecast model page here. Um, the, the, again, the potential, at least for a weekend wave of rain, because I know folks are going to be curious about that. This is the overnight run of the NAM weather model. Okay. And you can see what the NAM does here is Thursday night into Friday, uh, especially into Friday morning, you can see that, that swath of heavy rain it brings into the picture. I mean, it's a, it's a one and a half inch swath uh, of rainfall. Uh, from the overnight run of the NAM weather model. Okay, so there is data that is trying to do that. And if I go here to a different version of a of a higher res model out to that time frame, it's not nearly as wet like that. It's more sporadic and it's south. 
So we, we don't have the outcome, the answer to that yet, but the Friday forecast trending wetter is not out of the question, and it's something uh, I think could be possible. We'll keep watching that as we get closer. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.